two years worth of supply? Yes, because the model we were using only ran to 2031, so we've added two years on to take it to 2033. My wife often has this trouble bringing me up to speed with things as well. That's, that's helpful. Mr. Coursier. Thank you, sir. Um, can I go back to basics on this? Um, terrible phrase. Um, take you to actually how these have been calculated, the, how they've turned the 650 jobs into, a, um, into employment land requirements. And so you, you do need the ELR, so the Employment Land Review of 2016, probably in front of you to understand the points. So the process is, is set out in pages 26 to, um, to 30, really. Um, and so there are a number of heroic assumptions incorporated in this. And indeed, indeed, as you've heard, they've also added, in 2017, they added on the two-year additional addition as well. So first of all, sir, the stage A, um, the doing that was combining the jobs figures with forecasts, well, that's, we've, that's really, then the stage B is where we actually start having problems. Uh, um, converting forecasts f to full-time equivalent jobs, and this is why I was mentioning earlier today uh, the difficulty with the figures. What we know from looking at the um, ONS data is about 90% of the employment growth 2012 to 2020 whichever years you take, it's a very similar pattern, is in part-time employment. And so one would assume that a similar pattern will, will take place in the plan period. If the council would say, it, say that they're expecting it to all be 650 full-time equivalents, uh, there's absolutely no evidence to support that position. And so you then turn, sir, to page 46 of the um, ELR. And the council have recognised that there is going to, that some of, the, some of these 650 won't be full time. But you then look how they've done that by taking the proportion. Just bear with me a moment, Mr. Corsi. Sorry. That's page 46, sir. It would be useful for you to have it in front of you. So this is, if I've got the right thing, um, Annex A, and it's the full-time equivalent calculations. Exactly, sir. Exactly. And what you what you actually have there isn't is the proportion in each of the sectors, which is between full-time and part-time. And so that is not the same as we know from the past job creation, sir, of new jobs being created. We know the bulk of new jobs created are part-time, and that is not in any way reflected in, an, in Annex A. In fact, it's almost reverse, sir. This is assuming the great bulk of jobs are going to be full-time, Whereas actually we know from past trends that great bulk of jobs are going to be part-time. And you see the, at the footnote to Annex A says part-time jobs are seen to be on average 0 0.5 full-time equivalents. So there's a heroic assumption there by the council which actually greatly increases employment land needs. We then, sir, look at, sorry, I've lost my page. Uh, the next step is uh, allocating jobs to use class by sector. 
I don't disagree with the proportions there, sir. You will note, though, the council derives great support from admin and support, growth in job numbers to, to um, support their figure of for B1A. But you see, only 39% of those will, will require B1A floor space. What I'd try to do, sir, to assist you, is try to have a look at, clearly we have three different employment forecasts with very different sectoral break breakdowns. We know that the um, employment land requirement set out in the plan is based upon the 2016. The latest ones, and the latest one is very different in this sectoral composition, particularly for office demand. So what I've tried to do is apply the proportions to B1A to the increase in jobs or the change in jobs for the sectors which the council say make a demand for B1A. And the difference is quite quite great. On the 2016 um, forecast, about 40% of the jobs, job growth would require B1A floor space. On the October 21, that is less than 30%. So again, so figures, there's significant doubt in the figures. But then, sir, we move on to the next big assumption, is how do you convert that into actual floor space requirements? And the council's done that, sir, by using employment densities. And the council's done, used employment densities dating to 2010. It's a different era in offices uh, to now. It totally predates the movement to working from home, sir. And in that respect, sir, even pre-COVID, can I take you to paragraph 3.84, 3.8.4, of the council's hearing statement. The council couldn't make their case better for what I'm going to tell you. It said, York and North Yorkshire had a very high prevalence of home working with 19% of people working from home before the COVID pandemic. So have you got that in front of you? That, and the council later on, actually tell us that that has not been taken into account in any way in their calculations. Major, major difference. And of course, the whole way in which businesses use office floor, floor space has changed since, it was changing before the pandemic, but has substantially changed since the pandemic. There's no expectation, sir, that we will go back to people working in offices, most people working in offices five days a week. Hybrid working is now the pattern, and that will greatly lessen the demand for office floor space. And just to give you some examples, sir, A recent report in the Times business pages on the 23rd of April, sir, said that average UK office occupancy rates are around 25% at the present moment, I, you, about one in four of the available spaces are occupied, and that compared to pre-pandemic of 70%. Employment densities, the employment densities which the council are using, greatly overestimate demand for, particularly for, for office floor space.
So I have no, I, I don't criticize any way putting in a vacancy rate, it seems quite reasonable to do so. However, sir, the, the fact you get another two years, sir, of, for flexibility, for a plan which is providing employment land without phasing, and I stress without phasing, to 2038, is totally unnecessary. Because we will probably have two plan reviews or more before, tw before 2038. If there are problems with supply, it will, can be resolved through review. And so, in conclusion, we consider the employment land requir requirements are wholly unjustified and really require to be reassessed in light of up-to-date information. Thank you. Mr. Linus, go ahead. Thank you, sir. I ask uh, Ms. Dillman-Mood and uh, Mr. Brereton to, to comment, just a couple of introductory points uh, on my part. Forgive me if I've, if I've missed it, but the calculations that were made or put forward by Mr. Kirsty in relation to the second point, the 40% and the 30%, I don't know where they've come from and whether that's new evidence that's just been produced today. It's new evidence trying to take into account the new information which the Council supplied. On the, yeah, well, in, on, on I, I'm quite happy going through that over over the um, lunch break with your with your side. Oh, well, I think the difficulty is we, we don't know the, the basis for those calculations at this stage, so we can't we can't comment on them. Are you referring to the figure that was given to office occupancy rates? Yes, I think that was it, wasn't it? It was. It was a, I think I, I had noted a change from 40% down to 30%, which I think was that figure. Yes. So the, that was a figure I've calculated. If I can explain how I calculated it. Um, we have, of course, the, the employment by sector in the 2016 projection, sir. We have the employment by sector by in the um, 2022, 2021, sorry, 2021 projection. I have then used the so the percentages set out the proportion of jobs assigned of jobs assigned to use class in on page 47 of the 2016 ELR to those various sectors and added those you know for B1A and added those together and I proportioned it as a total job increase. It's a guideline, sir. I, 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 you know, it, what I'm trying to say is there has, if you accept the 650 jobs, sir, on the basis of more recent up-to-date um, figures, and we say you can't because they, 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 they're actually showing 450 jobs, not 650 jobs. But you have to recognize the sectoral composition has also changed away from B1A floor space. You can't just simply accept the 650 jobs on new information, but still apply the old information to the sectoral composition. Does that help, Mr. Lyons? Well, I think we obviously need to see if we can check the basis for that calculation, because we're not in a position to understand it at this stage. But I'll ask Ms. Uh, Dylan Moe to, uh, to deal with that um, further, subject to one further introductory point. Certainly the way that the point about employment densities was put, as we understood it from the um, uh, written reps from the Parish Council, was that it was particularly after COVID that this had uh, been an influence in the market. And it goes back to what we said before. Um, one cannot rely upon matters which may have occurred during uh, COVID as persisting in the long run as a reliable basis for uh, calculation. Um, as Mr. Brereton has said uh, already, um, there's an anticipation of certain activity moving back uh, to how it was a V-shaped uh, recovery, and one simply doesn't know at this stage whether there's going to be a long-term influence in office occupation in the way that Mr. Courcier has identified. Notwithstanding what you know, recent figures might suggest, there's a long way to go for COVID to be, uh, for the outworkings of COVID to be understood. 
So one cannot use that as a basis for changing the employment densities that are mentioned uh, in, the, uh, in the evidence. I can ask uh, Mr. Lamoud and uh, Mr. Brereton to pick up the further points, please. Thank you. Um, there are also changes in the jobs growth projections, including shifts in the sectoral splits, if you like, of the overall baseline um, data at different times when the OE model is, is run. That's acknowledged already in our 2017 employment land review update evidence, where we also tested, um, did a sensitivity test against the Experian data, which again had a slightly uh, different sectoral split. But the point was, overall, the broad levels of demand were appropriately reflected in supply. Um, and our supply response, as I said, the table the demand input is one input into the supply response. We've taken account of the market signals, some of which we've discussed today, um, to provide sufficient flexibility in the in, in employment, overall employment supply, including for offices. And we've just heard about the loss of office floor space. And so I'd suggest that a response that was to reduce that office floor space in that context would be an inappropriate supply response, given the data we have. I wonder if Mr. Brayer can deal with the conversion to FTE point that was made at the outset. Yeah, I mean, the, the, as I've said before, what, what we've done is we've taken the forecast job growth per sector and we've, we have applied the most up-to-date split between full-time and part-time for each sector and then turned that into an FTE equivalent growth for each sector. Um, the... Growth, there has been a growth in part-time employment in York. There has, I mean, that um, uh, partly reflects the demand for employment from people in York um, to fit um, their working lives around the rest of their lives. Um, the, and, and job growth partly reflects creating new, no, what we need to do is partly reflect creation of new jobs, but also reflect churn as well. Um, and I don't think it's fair to assume that just because, actually, if you look at the overall overall York economy, we've had particular growth in part-time employment, that therefore, if you're going to put a new building up somewhere, it's going to be full of part-time employ employees. Those part-time jobs are predominantly um, in um, our service industries in the city centre um, and in the, um, the uh, hospitality industry and in social care, um, none of which actually rely on B1 office space for, to, to deliver space. So, but what we do know is that there is the, the, the growth that we're predicting, particularly in those high value jobs, which we've heard many people refer to today, um, those jobs are predominantly in office space. And while there are, there's an element of part-time within that, which we've accounted for by looking at the average split in, for instance, information and communication sector jobs. You know, you, you take the, the current split and assume that, 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 that future um, uh, growth is going to reflect um, the current split in that sector. And that's, that, that's exactly what we've done. Um, in relation to the point around COVID and completely changing the amount of space that people need because of changing patterns, it is too soon to say what the overall impact would that would be. However, um, we have seen in terms of what's um, ha you know, the, the, the work and you, know, you may have noticed that we're just going through the process of opening the Guildhall as a workspace. Um, there were concerns at one point that nobody was going to want to use that space. Actually, the, um, uh, the science park who are letting it tell us they could have let it three times over. There is very strong demand for, for office space, notwithstanding the changing working patterns that we all have. Um, and certainly, you know, we're not in a position to come up with a new set of multipliers on the basis of what we think might be happening in the economy. We may have to adjust that in, I don't know, two or three year ti years' time when, 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 the, when, when the world has settled down again. But um, you know, I'm sure that any changes from that would be reflected. Sorry, in Mr. Brennan, could you maybe move your microphone a bit closer? Sorry. Uh, so yeah, we would, uh, basically what I'm saying is that we would we would, clearly that's one of the things that we'll need to review um, um, a, as we go forward in terms of um, are there changing patterns in terms of office demand in York 
um, it will be interesting to see what happens when York Central does come on stream, which is the main quantum of space, really, in, in terms of employment land in the city. But at the moment, when the indications we're getting are not that nobody's going to want office space in there because it's only part-time jobs. It's, it's just not reflected in what's happening in the economy. Okay, I think that's probably a convenient time for us to, to break for lunch. If, if everyone's content, we'll, we'll resume at a quarter to two. Yeah? Until then, thank you.